going to continue our investigation of quadratic functions in vertex form by looking at domain and range. First, we need to consider how can we describe in words all possible values that X and Y can have? And we're going to use this graph here to, look, to, to uh, do that. I'm going to grab the highlighter here. If we want to start with the X values, if we look here, we have a point where the two lines join together. This tells me there's nothing occurring to the right that X can't be bigger than 4. Okay. If I want to follow what's happening with X, if I follow this line down, it passed through all the values of X, but it stopped at negative 1. However, if I follow this line segment, it's got an arrow on the end here, which is showing me that it's going to keep passing all the X values that are less than 4. Okay. If I want to look at, so then I can just say that X can take on any values in the real number system that are less than 4, because there is a line that allows it to pass through every single value. If I want to look at the Y values, again, I'm not really starting here, am I, for Y? i got to follow all the way down and find my lowest point. My lowest point and my lowest value here is that negative 5. And if I follow the relation, I pass through all the values till I get to zero. And now I can keep following it in this direction. And I'm going to keep passing through all the values as y gets increasingly larger. So I can say y can have any value greater than or equal to negative 5. And it is a real number. Now, that leads us to a discussion of what, in fact, domain and range really are. The domain of a function is described as the set of all possible values of the independent variable, or we could call them the x values that it can take on, or the first elements in a relation. Similarly, the range is the set of all possible values of the dependent variable, also known as the y values or the second elements in a relation. How do we describe domain and range? Well, first of all, when we're describing the domain and range, we need to know, use some symbols. We use a vertical line to tell us that um, the values belong to a set such that. We use a curved capital E to say is an element of or belongs to. And really, this isn't going to make that much sense until we actually write one in proper mathematical form. We also need to know, in the last example, we talked about the fact that the numbers could take on any real value. But there are other types of numbers that do exist, or sometimes in the context of the question we're dealing with, we can't have decimal values. So we need to know how to describe those numbers. So we use n to represent our natural number system. So numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4 um, are our natural numbers. w is used to represent the whole number system, so things like 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. z is for the integers. So all of your whole numbers that could be positive or negative now are encompassed in the integer. Q is your rational number system. So anything you can write as a fraction where the numerator or the denominator, and, sorry, and the denominator are integer, and then real numbers. That's all of those number systems put together, and we can put the number pi in there as well. Sorry, that had to be fixed. It was bothering me. Now, if I want to go back to the example we were doing in a few minutes ago, if I want to state the domain and range of that function, I need to think about the fact that the x value, what could happen with x? Well, let's take a look here. Now let's find the cursor. It doesn't seem to want to be coming and working for me here. There we go. Domain, we always start by putting a capital D in front to talk about it, an equal sign. And we have a curvy bracket. Domain and range always use curvy brackets, not the round ones that you're used to. Now, x belongs to the set such that we said x has to be less than or equal to 4. 
and we said it can be any real number. So we said x belongs to the set of real numbers. The range, on the other hand, we use a capital R for, and we're talking about our y values. Mm -hmm. And y has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. And it's an element of the real numbers. Now, sometimes students get mixed up on is domain the x values or the y values. I just use the alphabet. D comes before R, X comes before Y. A lot of times that'll work with math stuff, and it does for this one. So remember, domain belongs with X and range belongs with Y. If I look at this, if I want to state the domain and range of each of the following er, relations, so if I look at this one, I should know by looking at the equation. We studied linear relations in grade 9 very thoroughly, and again in grade 10, we should know from the equation that it's a straight line that rises to the left. However, if we don't, we do have the graph and we can see that the graph continues upwards and it continues downwards and it's also moving in to the left and it's continually moving to the right and ultimately it's going to pass through all possible x and y values. So we can just say that the domain belongs to the set such that x is an element of the real numbers. We can say the range is equal to all y values such that y is an element of the real numbers. Again, this equation should be familiar from grade 10. It's the equation of a quadratic function in vertex form. So hopefully we can look at that and know what it's going to look like on a graph. And if we don't, that's okay. We've got a picture here. If I look at the graph, if I'm looking at my x values, if I follow my graph, it's passing through everything. If I look here, though, it's continuing off to the left. And if I look here, it's continuing off to the right. So I can say x is, again, an element of the real number system. If I look at my y values, if I look here, y has the smallest value, doesn't it? It can't go below here. So y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Does it stop? Well, there's an arrow up here to show it's continuing off upwards forever. And the same arrow exists over here. So we're going to say y is greater than or equal to negative 2. And since it passes through all the values, we're going to also say that y is an element of the real numbers. In addition, we could have looked at the equation to figure out the domain and range. And if I think about this value here for x, can I take any number I want, add 2 to it, and square it? Yeah. And take away 2? Yeah. So x can be any real number. When I think about the range, if I look at it, when I take any number I want and square it, it's always going to be positive. So if I didn't have this negative 2 here, I would say y has to be greater than or equal to 0. But since there's a negative 2 on the bottom, it means everything has to drop down to, so y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Finally, we're going to look at a set of ordered pairs. Now, these are ordered pairs. If we graph them, all we're going to see is four points on the graph. Okay? There's nothing to indicate that those points should be joined in any way at all. So if we look at it, the domain is strictly the x values. So if I look at the x values at the top, it's 1, negative 2, negative 4, and we see the negative 2 repeated. Now we don't have to list the negative 2 twice. We're only going to put the x coordinates. Similarly, for the range, you see a 4, a 3, a 1, and a 2. So that's all I'm going to put in the range. Okay? There are no greater than or less than symbols or a number system indicated because these answers don't specify anything but those exact points. Great. So, a few questions for homework to practice this concept. And don't forget, there'll be a quiz when you get into class tomorrow. Okay? Good night.